32 musical acts performed at Woodstock, the most famous rock and roll festival in history. Who were they? Some of them are the hugest rock and roll stars of all time. And some of them you may never have heard of. Did they get paid? And if so, how much? In this video, we'll tell you who played, how much 30 of the 32 artists were paid, and what that equals in today's dollars. If you think an artist should have been paid more, or was paid too much, tell us in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, please subscribe and click like. It makes a huge difference. Bert Summer was in the musical hair and his eyes and afro are seen on the iconic poster. Perhaps because he was signed to a rival record label, none of his audio performances appeared on the soundtrack or in the film. Bert Summer was paid an undisclosed amount. Starting at 6 a.m. on Monday morning, Blues harmonica great Paul Butterfield and his band performed a set of horn-heavy soul and blues for an exhausted audience. By that time, a lot of people were leaving the festival to return to reality, but the band somehow turned out an energetic set, including their original Morning Sunrise. Paul Butterfield Blues Band was paid an undisclosed amount for this set. Quill was a Boston band that played small clubs and opened up for acts like The Who, Jeff Beck, The Kinks, Deep Purple, and more. An early summer 1969 gig at Steve Paul's scene in New York City culminated in a jam with Hendrix, Stephen Stills, and Johnny Winter. The performance earned Quill an invite to play at Woodstock. Quill was paid $375. In today's dollars, that would be $3,041.25. Keith Hartley of the Keith Hartley Band was an English drummer and a big band leader. His career began as a drummer for Liverpool bands Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. He was the replacement for Ringo after Ringo joined the Beatles. The group played at Woodstock in 1969, but the band's set was the only one that was never included on any officially released album, nor on the soundtrack of the film. The Keith Hartley Band was paid $500 for performing, which in 2022 dollars equals $4,055. Sha Na Na was formed in 1969. This doo-wop group wore 50 style clothing and both parodied and revived American 1950 street culture. Their friend, Jimi Hendrix, got them this gig at Woodstock. The performance won them some fame and led to their TV variety show, which ran from 1977 to 1981. Sha Na Na was paid $700 to perform at Woodstock, which would be $5,677 in today's dollars. Melanie was an up-and-coming songwriter when Buddha Records' Artie Rip sent her to Woodstock on the off chance that she'd be able to perform. She had no idea what she was walking into. She literally thought it was a picnic. Melanie was given a slot, and she was the only woman to perform solo at Woodstock. Melanie was paid $750, which is $6,082.50 in today's currency. Santana was founded in San Francisco in 1966 by guitarist Carlos Santana. The band's appearance at Woodstock increased their profile tremendously. Santana went on to record a number of commercially successful and critically acclaimed albums in the next decade. Carlos Santana and his band continue to be an important voice in music. Santana was paid $750 to play, which equals $6,082.50 in today's money. John B. Sebastian was not booked to perform at Woodstock, but the audience knew him well as the former lead singer of The Love and Spoonful. Sebastian and Rick Danko of the band were playing soft acoustic music for the kids recovering in the trip tent. Then Chip Monk pressed Sebastian into service to perform on short notice, saying, We need somebody to hold them with one acoustic guitar and you're elected. John B. Sebastian was paid $1,000 or $8,110 in today's currency. Scheduled to open the festival, Sweetwater followed Richie Havens and they're often cited as the first band to perform at Woodstock. Like other groups, Sweetwater were stuck in the traffic and couldn't make it to the festival site in time for them to kick off the festivities. Their performance was well received, but the stage monitors were not working. As a result, they couldn't hear themselves or each other singing. Instruments were being routed through the vocal mics, which didn't help, and because of the sound problems, Fred Herrera jokingly claims that Sweetwater was the sound check for Woodstock. 
Sweetwater was paid $1,250, which equals $10,137.50 today. On Sunday afternoon, an English band called the Grease Band kicked off the third day of music at Woodstock. After playing two songs, their lead singer, Joe Cocker, stepped off the helicopter and onto the stage to begin his hour and a half set that was one of the most memorable of the festival. In 1969, Cocker recorded his own version of Beatles song with a little help from my friends. The track was a massive success, which reached the top 10 in Britain and number 68 in America. Joe Cocker's performance of it was a major moment at Woodstock. Joe Cocker and the Grease Band were paid $1,375, which in today's currency equates to $11,151.25. Tim Harden was a respected songwriter who wrote the massive hit If I Were a Carpenter, but never quite managed to chart with his own recordings. Harden's performance on the first day of Woodstock was marred by extreme stage fright and a debilitating addiction to heroin. If I Were a Carpenter was a high point of his set. The low point was a song about heroin which he hadn't even taught to his band beforehand. Tim Harden was paid $2,000 which equals $16,220 in today's currency. Leslie West's band Mountain was a Long Island proto-heavy metal band that blew away the mostly unprepared Woodstock audience. Surprisingly, Mountain's set was not included in the 1970 Woodstock documentary or the soundtrack album. They're often credited with being one of the early influences of heavy metal. Mountain was paid $2,000 for playing at Woodstock, or $16,220 in today's currency. Scottish psychedelic folk group The Incredible Stirring Band was riding a wave of popular and critical success in 1969. Unwilling to perform in the rain on Friday evening with the other folk acts, they were rescheduled to play Saturday evening between Keith Hartley Band and Canned Heat. This was the largest crowd they would ever play in front of, and unfortunately, they were not well received. They kicked the set off with a poem, for one thing. Then the performance was stripped of much of the lush production featured on their records, and the vocal harmonies of their female singers were somewhat lackluster in the live setting. ISB was not included in the Woodstock movie, nor on the soundtrack album, so many of their fans and potential fans were unaware that the band had even been at Woodstock. They were, however, paid $2,250. Today, that would equal $18,247.50. Bad weather, sound equipment problems that caused long delays, and an almost completely dark stage contributed to what's considered one of the Dead's less impressive live shows. Before the Dead set, audio engineer and legendary LSD chemist Owsley Bear Stanley made several alterations to the audio setup, including removing the grounding from the electrical supply. During the opening number St. Stephen, Bob Weir touched his guitar and mic at the same time, giving a major electrical shock and blowing the power out momentarily. Unfortunately, this meant the second verse of the song was not captured by either film or audio recording crews. The dead were paid $2,250, which equals $18,247.50 today. Country Joe McDonald, lead singer of Country Joe and the Fish, wasn't originally scheduled to perform. He was there to see the bands. But during a lull, while Santana was setting up, he was asked to fill in some time. His acoustic set was politely received, but Joe was unsatisfied. He asked if he could do one more number, and the road manager said, well, nobody's listening to you, so what difference does it make? Country Joe returned to the mic and blew away the audience with Feel Like I'm Fixin' to Die rag, which became one of the most iconic performances of the festival and the defining moment of his career. Country Joe McDonald was paid $2,500, which is the equivalent of $20,275 today. Ten years after was hot in the summer of 1969. In addition to recording their fourth album, they were among the first rock groups invited to perform at Newport Jazz Festival. They played the Seattle Pop Festival in July, followed by their career-defining performance in August at Woodstock. But due to puddles on stage causing constant electrical shocks and major tuning issues due to humidity, the band struggled to perform at first, stopping mid-song to retune multiple times. By the end of their set, guitarist Alvin Lee was tearing up the stage with some of the most intense licks of the festival. The crowd went mad, Alvin Lee was given a watermelon as a prize as he left the stage, and the band walked off without an encore. Ten years after was paid $3,250.
which equals $26,357.50 today. Given the late start to Sunday's festivities, it was nearly Monday morning as Johnny Winter made his way onto the Woodstock stage to deliver a masterful, powerful, blues-drenched set. It wasn't included in either the film or the soundtrack. Winter was paid $3,750, which equates to $30,412.50 today. As the central figure in the counterculture's appropriation of Indian culture and music, Ravi Shankar had played at Monterey Pop and released three records of that performance. So it was only natural that Ravi Shankar was asked to play at Woodstock. Just as the rain started, Ravi Shankar and his group delivered a mesmerizing 45-minute set of classical Indian ragas. Ravi Shankar was paid $4,500 for his set, which equates to $36,495 today. Crosby, Stills & Nash was a supergroup, and this was their second show. The size of the audience and the presence of so many musical icons had them understandably nervous, even though they were one of the hottest acts of 1969. Crosby, Stills & Nash soothed the audience with gorgeous harmonies before Stephen Stills announced the addition of Neil Young to the group, to tremendous response. They did acoustic and electric numbers and had a powerful impact on the proceedings. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young was paid $5,000 to appear, which equals $40,550 today. Arlo Guthrie was well known for his hit Alice's Restaurant record and he had just dropped a second album when he appeared at Woodstock. His band was on point, but Arlo didn't sing that great and tended to ramble between songs. His performance was lackluster enough that the Woodstock soundtrack uses a version of Coming Into Los Angeles that was recorded at a different concert. Arlo Guthrie was paid $5,000 to appear, which equals $40,550 today. Folk singer Richie Haven's band arrived early, by helicopter, and they had a simple setup. So when the time for the festival to start had come and gone, and opening act Sweetwater was still stuck in traffic 20 miles away, Richie Havens finally agreed to play first. Even though his bass player had not yet arrived, Havens found himself opening the festival with his brand of energetic folk music. With no other acts ready to take the stage, he was urged into encore after encore, until finally, he ran out of material in his third encore. At that moment, on the spot, Richie Havens wrote Freedom while the band played it live. It remains his best work and a highlight of the Woodstock Festival. He had to watch the documentary afterwards to remember how he played it. Richie Havens was paid $6,000, which would be $48,660 today. The Who followed Sly and the Family Stone, taking stage at 5.30 a.m. The band members were not happy. The water and coffee backstage were dosed with LSD, and the band found themselves tripping against their will for 12 hours before their set even started. Pete Townsend kicked the cameraman with his Doc Martens boot when they got on stage. Then they played an incredible set, including large portions of the rock opera Tommy. A ranting, acid-soaked Abby Hoffman grabbed Pete Townsend's mic mid-set again, earning him a famous bonk on the back of the head from Pete's guitar. The Who were paid $6,250, which equals $50,687.50 today. Canned Heat was four records into a successful rock and roll career when they found themselves at Woodstock in a primo time slot. They brought an up-tempo set of boogie blues rock and roll to an enthusiastic crowd, capped off with the classic rendition of Going Up the Country that is a cornerstone of the album and the documentary. This would be the peak of the band. Canned Heat were paid $6,500, which equals $52,715 today. Hot off the huge success of their number one single, Everyday People, Sly and the Family Stone was hugely popular when they appeared at Woodstock. But Sly Stone himself was a notoriously unreliable live performer. And of course, when he got to Woodstock, he put off appearing on stage over and over again, causing even more delays. They say MC John Morris only got Sly on stage when he angrily slammed Stone against a trailer and threatened to beat him up if he didn't go on. Sly and the Family Stone tore up that stage and turned out one of the best performances of the entire festival. They were paid $7,500, which equals 
which equals $60,825 today. Jefferson Airplane was well established in 1969. They were the act intended to headline Saturday's proceedings. The airplane finally took to the stage at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, with Grace Slick promising the crowd morning maniac music, quote unquote. The airplane had been up for 24 hours straight, tripping on LSD, and Grace was being shocked by her microphone constantly during the set. Though the set was rough around the edges, it had powerful energy, wrapping up at 8.45 a.m. before an exhausted crowd. Jefferson Airplane were paid $7,500, which equals $60,825 today. Janis Joplin was rock royalty when she appeared at Woodstock. She had left Big Brother and the Holding Company in late 1968, and she appeared at Woodstock with the soul-tinged group calling itself the Cosmic Blues Band, and she had some new music the audience had never heard before. Like most of the artists that played at Woodstock, Janice was seriously intimidated by the huge size of the crowd. As a result, she got totally wasted before performing. The new sound of her new band got a mixed reaction, and it wasn't included on the soundtrack or in the documentary. Janice was paid $7,500, which equals $60,825 today. Everyone was hoping Bob Dylan, who lived in Woodstock, New York, would make an appearance at Woodstock. Dylan didn't come, but his backing band, the band, did. The band played a fantastic set, but were plagued by shouts of, Where's Dylan? throughout the performance. The band did not think their show was up to snuff, and they didn't allow it to be used in the soundtrack or on the film. They were paid $7,500, which equals $60,825 today. Creedence Clearwater Revival was huge on the radio in the summer of 1969 and they were very well loved. Many concert goers and the band members themselves remember this set as one of their absolute best. Singer John Fogarty was not pleased though. He didn't like the performance. He blamed the other band members for being sluggish and he blamed the Grateful Dead for putting the audience to sleep. Ultimately, Fogarty refused to allow the performance in either the film or the soundtrack. Credence was paid $10,000 to perform which equals $81,100 today. Joan Baez was the queen of 1960s folk music to Bob Dylan's King, and she had an impressive catalog of 10 albums before she took the stage as the final act on the first night, the Folk Night at Woodstock. Joan Baez's Woodstock performance was immortalized on the soundtrack album and in the film, but her legacy and her career did not need the boost. Joan Baez was already a key part of the 1960s counterculture, Baez was paid $10,000 to perform, which equals $81,100 today. On the heels of their number one self-titled album and lots of FM radio play, Blood, Sweat and Tears was ready to rock the Woodstock Festival on its final night. Unfortunately, extremely high humidity plagued the horn section's intonation. This kept the band from approving their performance for the soundtrack album or the film. Blood, Sweat and Tears were paid $15,000 to perform, which is worth $121,650 today. Jimi Hendrix was one of the most anticipated acts at Woodstock, forming a group specifically for the occasion and naming it Gypsy Sun and Rainbows. Hendrix's group was scheduled to headline Woodstock's final evening around midnight, but scheduling delays meant that he didn't take the stage until 9 a.m. on Monday morning, and most of the crowd was gone. The 40,000 people remaining witnessed one of the most riveting performances of the 1960s, including an unplanned solo guitar version of the Star Spangled Banner that defined the event. Gypsy Sun and Rainbows was paid $18,000, which equals $145,980 today. If you dug that video, click like and subscribe, and check out this other one here about Will the Circle Be Unbroken and Nitty Gritty Dirt Band.